The aim of the More Profit from Crop Nutrition program is to help growers improve the return on investment from fertilizer inputs. One of the projects under the More Profit from Crop Nutrition program will deliver new guidelines for micronutrient management in WA cropping systems. One of the current issues affecting micronutrient management is copper deficiency and the suggested relationship with frost damage. Here at a trial site located just a few kilometres southeast of York in Western Australia, a collaborative research effort between the Department of Agriculture and Food Western Australia, Murdoch University and CSBP is being undertaken to evaluate the different copper formulations used to treat CU deficient soils and investigate the relationship between copper and frost. I'm Ross Brennan, Department of Agriculture and Food. I'm based in Albany and I'm a Principal Research Officer. Uh, well, probably the main way of doing it is to look at the copper history. If the farmer knows that it's 20 years since he put on the original copper application or uh, hasn't used copper in any form in that period of time, uh, there's probably a very strong possibility uh, that uh, copper could be a problem. The other uh, way is to plant test, do plant tissue testing. Uh, you can do that earlier in the season and there's well known critical concentrations that allow us to say this crop is now or marginally copper deficient or deficient and you can do corrective measures without losing any significant proportions of your yield. In our current cropping systems that are more productive, intensive and reliant on supplies of nitrogen and phosphorus fertilisers, there's some suggestion that micronutrient deficiencies will re-emerge. Copper deficiency in particular has similar symptoms to frost damage and it's important to be able to distinguish between the two. Well, certainly uh, if, the, if copper is severe uh, and um, you get very acute uh, short growth, so it does affect the growth of the plant as well. Uh, again, it's the youngest tissue becomes, uh, uh, the youngest emerging tissue is cooled and uh, becomes like a needle, has a, like a needle-like structure. Uh, so that's at the vegetative st st uh, stage. Uh, when we move into grain production, uh, as the copper is required in pollen formation, uh, you get uh, in, infertile heads, uh, so the head will form, uh, look as though it's full of grain, uh, but it's, uh, there's nothing in it, or very shriveled grain, uh, and you get what they, we call rat tail heads, so the, the top part of the head uh, thins out like a, a rat tail and comes all scrubby and bushy, uh, and it often turns white. So you have a white head. Uh, this is what we call a shepherd's crook. Uh, and when it's mildly deficient, uh, grain is able to form uh, within the head and the weight of the grain uh, actually pulls the head over. So it's just the weight of the grain uh, signifying that you've got weak straw. The symptoms of copper and frost are very similar in the plant. So you get uh, a malformation of the head uh, and often the two, the two symptoms are often confused. For further information about the copper and frost trials, visit the Department of Agriculture and Food website. You can also download the MyCrop app from the department's website, which aids in paddock crop diagnostics. Visit the Grains Research and Development Corporation's website for more information about the More Profit from Crop Nutrition Program.